What happens when you take the highest rated players from outside of the North American leagues in NHL 20 and put them all on one team in franchise mode? How successful will they be? Well, today we're going to answer just that. A shout out to those of you on Patreon who took part in the poll to help make this video a reality. Of course, patreon.com slash 24 If you want to learn more about how you can help make those decisions for me on what videos you might see featured on this channel. But indeed, today the challenge is focusing on Team Sum of Europe as we are going to try and make a run with this roster as best we can. So again, to summarize it, no NHL, no AHL, ECHL, or any junior league players. It is just the best of the rest from the rest of the leagues that never seem to get that much love within the EA NHL community. Now, I have based it solely off of the highest overall from EA's default roster, not at least uh, the most updated roster, I should say. Not, of course, the launch roster, but from that most recent roster update in March. And this is what we have come up with. A top line of Josh Joris. Of course, he was on a lot of different teams. Calgary, Toronto, New York, if I'm not mistaken. It's not going to tell us, unfortunately. But Josh Joris was around for a long time. Turtleneck himself, Tomas Plakanix, is here. The Leafs great also played for the Habs for a little bit. <laughs> he is on the top line. Next to shootout extraordinaire, it's 36-year-old UC Jokinen. Now, the one thing you're going to notice with this team is I have everybody set up as two ways, mainly because we're listed as a defensive team, and that's how this team is going to have to win. We're going to have to be like the Stars or Islanders on overdrive in terms of just shut them down defensively. We have to bring back the 90s if we're ever going to win, but that is our top line. Second line, we have a former uh, Chicago Blackhawk, played for a couple different teams as well, Montreal too, I do believe. Andreas Martinson is here next to Eric Fair and Oscar Lindbergh. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's a second line, all right. A third line, this is where we see a young prospect. Lucas Raymond, who hasn't even been drafted yet, is on this team alongside Tom Pyatt and the captain. The legend himself, Yuramir Yager, who's listed as 27 years old. I don't know why. It just breaks. And it makes Yager 27. As opposed to, God, how old is Yuramir Yager now? 45? 47? Yuramir, how old are you? 48! Jesus Christ, he was 45 when he was on the Bruins, roughly. Oh, maybe not, that was seven years ago. What, is, what even is time... But yeah, 48-year-old Jeremy Yager's on the team. And then we have a fourth line of Connor Brickley, Patrick Berglund, and Marcus Kruger. So you can see why we've gone with that very defensive style, the fourth line. Uh, actually, the fourth line with grinders, uh, a couple of grinders, a two-way there, and Brickley in a third line. We've tried to go for a little bit of skill with Yager and Raymond. Actually, I said the two-way thing. I thought I had more two-ways beyond just the first line, but for the most part, it's a real mix and match of defensive styles. Defensively, it's not much better. Uh, Petri Lindbaum is here alongside uh, former Jets great Tobias Enstrom. Second pairing, Patrick Weirkoch is here alongside Simone Dupre. And a third pairing of Paul Meh Postma. Shout out to Sim for the win. And Vili Heinola. So, you know, a bit of a Jets influence here. Obviously, the chemistry we need to hope helps out a lot. Goaltending, Michael Neuverth and Scott Darling. I don't know how Neuverth and Darling still have these high of ratings. If that ever showed you that, what, however they do the rosters, that it doesn't even have to be me involved. I'm just saying, however they do the rosters and ratings, it needs an overdrive because it's not working. However, how are these two anywhere close to being listed as backup worthy by this franchise mode's logic? I don't know, but hey, it helps us in this challenge because they might be able to get the job done. Down in the AHL, I mean, obviously you're still going to see guys like Dennis Cholosky here. I should note, uh, we took the Detroit Red Wings and subbed them out because why the hell not? Unfortunately, you can't just do a 30-second team expansion, at least not that I noticed. I could have sworn you could have, but I don't think you can do a 30-second team expansion and just place your team in the league. You'd have to do the expansion draft. So that kind of sucks. Uh, but other names, uh, Forrest Baca Carlson, Tommy Wingles, uh, some of the better forwards that would have been available to us defensively. Uh, Eric Jelena is our top option. And goaltending-wise, uh, Kari Ramo is another goaltender. 
that's available for us here. So it's an interesting team. I don't expect it to be a very good team. I did go through and get us the best coaching staff that I possibly could, which means they're not great because there's never great coaches available out of the gates. We're listed as a rebuilder, which is not surprising. But still, we're going to see what this team can do. We're going to see what they're capable of. I do not expect this to make the playoffs, but I would consider it a gigantic W if we did. Apparently, I offered Jesse Pugliarvi a contract. I don't know when that happened. Although we might have to get him onto the team now because, yeah, technically, I mean, he, he's playing in the European leagues. When the hell did I offer Pugliarvi a deal and would he not have already been signed to begin with? Well, this could completely change everything if we can get Pugliarvi involved. Hot damn. Let's take a look. I am so tempted now to just start this episode over because that's a ridiculous game changer. But, yeah, we're going to have to see if Pugliarvi fits the team. Screw it. Whatever. We'll do this in real time. I don't even care. So... Yes, yeah, do you fit the team is the question. Is it going to show me without having to put him into the lineup? I mean, he's okay for the second and third pairing or second and third lines. Lucas Raymond can take draws. Pyatt could play on the second line if need be. Martinson could go down to the fourth line. You know, I think the move here might be to take out Tom Pyatt. I like Tom Pyatt. But I think we replace Lucas Raymond with Pugliarvi. We'll put him there. And then we'll take out Tom Pyatt for Lucas Raymond. And then we'll have a third line of Pugliarvi, Raymond, Yager. Works for me. Doesn't make too much of a difference to that third line either. So we'll sim to our first game against Nashville. We'll take a look at the overall ratings and such. Uh, apparently we also signed Honka. You know what? They must have been listed as RFAs. That's what it is. I added them to the team. Forgot. It has to be a, a complication due to certain teams having their rights. But I'm cool with having Honka here as well, who, of course, left Dallas and went back overseas. He's only listed as a 77. And then you saw uh, Raymond was listed as a qualified RFA. So apparently this challenge does very weird things. <laughs> very weird things indeed. To franchise mode because of the complications with player rights. Uh, you know, I'm going to leave it as is, but if we need to make a change, Honka could certainly make the team. Actually, let's call him up and see how he fits, just so that's not a real question mark over what we'd be looking at. And this is why on uh, my custom rosters, of course, we just say, well, screw it, Pooley, RV, and Honka, they're out because it causes complications like this within franchise. So Honka really only fits the third pair. Which... Yeah. What's Honka listed as a two-way, right? Yeah. We'll leave it as is for now. No problem there. We'll leave it as is. So let's take a look at the team's overall ratings, shall we? <laughs> it's not going to be great. 75, 76, and a 79. Of course, we tried to base it off of the... Uh, uh, the European team in the 2016 World Cup, although we certainly don't have any jerseys that can really match up with what they had. Hopefully we'll get to see these jerseys uh, in in person here during the playoffs. <laughs> Who the hell am I kidding? We're going to be absolutely awful. I don't mind some of the challenges that people have set up and uh, proposed, but obviously with some of them, our backs are going to be, we won our first three games. <laughs> obviously with some of them, as Alex Holtz has apparently signed as well, uh, with some of them, our backs are really going to be up against the wall in terms of even making the playoffs. And there you go. We're right back down to 500. Uh, we'll see whether or not we end up getting Alex Holtz into the lineup. So something that I certainly overlooked was you know, the whole complications with the RFAs. But as mentioned, or with guys who had rights for other teams and not being under contract and it forcing them to sign, like the three guys we've seen already in this episode, or in this video, I should say. But... You know, obviously, they're not going to make drastic differences to this team. We're still going to be extremely low rated, so I'm not all that concerned about it. But yeah, beyond winning our first three games of the season, it appears as though already that this team is just is just dead in the water. Although, uh, I was going to say, you know, if we win against Boston, it would have been three in a row, and who's to say? But no, we're going, we're going right back down. On 17 points here, it's 23 to be in a wild card spot. 
We'll take a look at the roster come December 1st, but call it a hunch, I don't think there's too much we can do to really help our situation here. Three games left. We lose to Toronto, Philadelphia, and will we lose to Washington as well? No, we beat the Caps. There we go. Fun fact, the Boston Bruins are somehow worse than we are. Figure that one out. I don't know how that's even possible. Thomas Mechanics leading this team in points 21 through 29 games. Let's see what we have through this point of the season. So Josh Joris, you know what we're going to do actually is we are just going to reward the players who have been playing the best in terms of point totals. You know, line chemistry I don't think is really going to help us all that much. So we'll just see what happens. I want to call up Alex Holtz as Forsbach Carlson's up to a 76. I don't know what his chemistry is at this point, but obviously another one of those players is really affected by it. So let's see. Oh, God. <laughs> Seven points and a minus 10 for Marcus Kruger. All right. That's, that's something. Patrick Berglund. Oh, my God. That fourth line. Woof. 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 Not good. At all. Berglund. Berglund's been the worst. For sure. I mean, if you take the point total and then remove, you know, the plus minus. Basically, we'd consider him a minus six. At that point, Kruger's a minus three. Brickley's a minus five. Yikes. You have Yermir Yager, who is uh, doing okay. Essentially, we'd consider him a, a positive 12. He has, I mean, he's not great. Lucas Raymond doing very, very well. Uh, pool Party has been okay at a 13. All right, so, I mean, that third line's been pretty good. Lindbergh has been okay. Fair, eh. Martinson, eh. I mean, it's about as good as you could have expected the team to do. I think the obvious thing here, though, in terms of forwards, let's get Pyatt and Holtz into the lineup for Brickley and Berglund. I feel like that's the best thing we can do to kind of kick things off here. And we'll see if the uh, younger options, or at least the younger option in Holtz and a different option in Tom Pyatt is enough to kind of get the job done here. So just to look again, like I said, Kruger, you can consider like a minus three. Yager, we have it like a 12. Lucas Raymond, significantly better at an 18. And then Pool Party at a 15. So, I mean, yeah, that's, that's pretty much accurate. What's Lindbergh looking like here? Honestly, you know, I don't think I want to break up that third line now that I think about it. I don't necessarily think the second line even deserves to necessarily get broken up. Although, eh, Fair and Martinson. You know what we're going to do is we're going to drop Fair and Martinson down to the fourth line. And there we go. I had a feeling we'd get some chemistry out of that. Who's the best center out of this group? Martinson should be able to take draws. It's weird that he can't. Because in real life, he definitely can. And then Juris, Placanics, Jokinen. Defensively, Lindbaum, only a minus seven. He and Enstrom do not work well together. Weirkoch with 20 points. Holy hell. He just doesn't work well together. And Heinel and Postma are okay. Paul Postma is actually a, a positive plus minus player. So the argument is who the hell gets taken out for Honka. And Honka best fits that third pair. As does Heinola and Postma. So I don't think Honka gets in. And then we have the two ways. I mean, I guess the second pairing would make sense. I think we'll take out Simone Dupre. And we'll give Honka an opportunity there. And then goaltending-wise, yep. Darling and Neuvert doing about as poorly as one would expect. Cool. I mean, we really have no choice. I don't think Kari Rama is going to be all that much better. Is it worth even tinkering around with the Lions? Probably not. But you know what? Due diligence and such just to see what might happen with the team. We'll give some other people an option. I mean, it's, it's for the best to at least give some players an opportunity uh, to see what happens. And hey, we've beaten Pittsburgh, so that's promising. Right? Yeah. Damn. 14, 18, and 1 make that 15. You know, we're not in dead last in this division by much. Now we're not dead last at all after beating Columbus. This, this could happen. It could. Am I a fool for believing it? Yes. Yes, I am. But somehow, some way, we're kind of still hanging around at least close to 500, which is absolutely insane to me. 
Hurts. Oh, goodness. Come on now. <laughs> Make a run. I dare you. I mean, the Hurricanes on 47 points are in a playoff spot. We are within striking distance. But we're starting to lose games a lot more consistently now. The fact that this team has won, you know, has already won at least 21 games to me is absolutely insane. Like, we shouldn't be... We, re we really shouldn't be that good. And still, we're only six points out of a playoff spot. Maybe we'll stop the sim here as of February 1st. 24, 25, and 3. We are six points out of a playoff spot right now. That is ridiculous. And it's because Turtleneck has 46 points in 52 games. Bat shit insane. Let's take a look here at the team. So Martinson. Eh, eh, eh. God, that, that, yeah, that's not great. Third line's fine. Second line's not great. Top line's okay. So we got to fix up the fourth line and the second line as best we can. The problem is, in terms of options to call up, we really don't have anybody that much better. Uh, so Brickley will slot in for Martinson because the, uh, oh, the amount of penalties is a problem. And from there, let's, uh, let's just get Eric Fair back into a better situation for him. We'll see what happens with this. I might bump up Pool Party, Raymond, and Yager, or not, because of the chemistry effects that would have. So that is, that's still going to be the team. Lindbaum and Enstrom, Weirkoch, Honka, oh god, the plus minus is here. So Heinle, Honka, Weirkoch, and Enstrom. We need some changes here. I just don't know what the hell it's going to be. I mean, Weirkoch puts up points, but five on five, he is a nightmare. An absolute nightmare. We're definitely going to lose this defensive chem. Postma has been one of our best players alongside Limbaum, so we're just going to give that a shot. And then I think we're going to go Heine, Lahanka, Weirkoch, Enstrom. <laughs> Oh, goaltending. Scott Darling has a, an over 900 save percentage, which I did not think was possible. I really didn't. Let's see what happens through February. Obviously, now we don't have the same chemistry that we did. If I were to truly optimize it, we might be okay. That's, that's the real question there. You know, if we were to... If we were to optimize it a little bit with, like, you know, making sure the chemistry was as best we could get it, it might be that much better. But honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I genuinely don't. It, it might help. It might not. Who's to say? What are you going to do? But as we look here, <sighs> I mean, we're, we're winning games. The record's not that bad. It's it's going to be close down the home stretch here. A lot more losses than I prefer to see, but the fact that still into February we can sit here and even pretend that this team might make the playoffs is hilarious. Although, yeah, with the amount of games we're losing here, yeah, I think those chances just went up in smoke. A very poor end of the month of February. We are now, yeah, we're 11 points out of it. It was a good run while it lasted. We're technically only 8 points out of it. Actually, 9. It was a good run while it lasted, but clearly it's just not going to happen, is it? If we look at the goaltending, I mean, Neuvirth and Darling are both over a 900. I'm so tempted to call up Ramo. Lindbaum, Heinle, Honka, Weirkoch, Enstrom. I mean, defensively, we're a mess. We are a mess. And like I said, Eric Jana is one of the top options, like the only option we have to call up. So it's not going to get better anytime soon. But Lindbaum, uh, I guess we'll just base it off of overall. Let's go Enstrom Postma, which might have actually been a pairing at some point. Let's go Heinle, Weirkoch, Honka, Lindbaum. And then forward-wise, I mean, does it even matter? <laughs> does it even matter? Ugh, Brickley and Kruger have just been abysmal. Let's get Kruger out of there. Patrick Berglund, welcome back. What's the worst that could happen? And uh, Andreas Martinson. 
Welcome back as well. Because what's the worst that could happen? Let's just get it over with. Let's be honest. There's there's just nothing. There's nothing that we're going to be able to do to make this happen. There really isn't. So let's go ahead, get this over with, and say, hey, at the very least, we put up a good shot. We put up a good fight. We had a shot for a decent amount of time. But obviously... Uh, there is a severe lack of top-notch talent, especially when it comes uh, to the defensive side of things. That really just kind of, uh, really just kind of screwed us. But hey, what are we gonna do? So it was worth a shot. Again, for these challenge series, it is decided via my lovely patrons over on Patreon, and maybe one of these days uh, they will decide to give us a challenge that, you know, we can put up a decent fight with, at least more consistently. Of course, there have been some other challenge videos as well. If you haven't checked those out, feel free to. But there you have it. 30, 44, and 8 is about the best we could do. Still better than I thought we would have done. But obviously, uh, nowhere near the playoff picture, which I don't think anybody can be surprised with. And again, uh, you look at the default roster, or at least the most recent roster update, and you have to question some of these overalls. But at the very least, we did not finish in dead last, which is very, very promising. If it weren't for the fact that it had to glitch Yermir Yager's age down to 27, because otherwise he registers too highly and won't retire. So uh, to answer your question of what's the age at the point where someone will be guaranteed to retire in franchise, before the age of 48, because it resets their age back to 27, as if they're a legend player. So if anyone's seen uh, Zdeno Chara not retire uh, up until about 47, and then, hey, that's the, the lowest or the longest he can go uh, without retiring. But Tobias Enstrom, still capable of putting up 45 points, apparently, so... Maybe someone wants to bring back the Jets legend. And again, how this tandem has that high of overall, I will never, ever know. Yikes. Just yikes. That's it. Just yikes. But again, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any suggestions, of course, uh, let me know. Tier 2 subs on Patreon. Get the option to put selections on a poll. We vote from there. And the top options come out as uh, actual videos, which again, teams, some of Europe, not good enough to make the cut.